We all know that our country is terribly divided today to the point where none of us want to go home for Thanksgiving anymore and that it has been getting worse and worse for decades now to the point where historians are drawing parallels today to what it was like in the 1850s right before the U.S. Civil War. Why? How did we get stuck on this runaway train? So we've been studying this and what we find is that there are a multitude of different factors that are affecting this kind of polarization. It's everything from our differences in sensitivity of our brain to threat stimuli to algorithms on the internet that sort us into different tribes to news media entertainmentization and how that triggers outrage in us to our political system of the two-party system and gerrymandering of that system. All of these factors combine to start to pit us against each other and pull us apart. But worse than that, it's how each of these factors start to feed other factors and combine in complex ways that create vicious cycles that feel impossible to escape. These are what scientists call cloud problems. And so we're gonna give you five ideas that you can enact in your life to help find your way out. Stop for a moment, pause and take a breath. These days, so much of what we do is reacting automatically to things that trigger us. And it oftentimes can contribute to the patterns that we're stuck in. If you wanna break out of that pattern, what you really want to try to do is pause and ask yourself, what do I want here? What do I want to do? What is the direction I want this to go into? Doing that can be a very powerful nudge adjustment to just point you in a different direction. Find what's already working. So often in our life when we face problems, we look at what's broken and we don't ask ourselves what's already working, what's already helping. So one of the things you want to do is recognize that in your life, there are already people and groups that are really effective at bringing us together and, and helping us have useful, constructive conversations. These are people that can be contrary, but respectful. So what does that look like? Who are those people? Find them in your life, see them as role models, and try to begin to emulate what they do. In times like this that are very tense, we tend to automatically oversimplify issues and our sense of the other people, and we boil them down to a headline. What helps prevent that is if you can intentionally complicate your life, seek out information that is perhaps contrary to what you would typically believe, have conversations with people that you usually wouldn't talk to. These kinds of experiences open up your understanding of what are very complicated problems to a more nuanced sense and not to oversimplify them prematurely. Physically move. That means like getting up physically, dancing, walking, hiking, and ideally doing so with others. If you reach out to people across the division, going for a walk outside side by side with them can really connect you in ways that help you feel sort of more compassion and understanding for the other side. This is a hard problem and it's taken us decades to get here and it's going to be hard to address it. We'll try things that won't work. That's okay. Anticipate that. Know that that's going to happen and when it does happen, what's important is that we just pick ourselves back up and we continue to work on this. One person can make a huge difference. It really starts there. It starts with us working on ourselves and working together.